guys, welcome back and thanks for joining me. Um, I'm going to just share this wee pattern with you. I've been asked to tie this um, by a, an angler who fishes the River Teeth in Scotland. Now, this is the wee pattern here. Uh, I don't know the name of it, um, but I just received the photograph to tie the wee fly. So, probably much like a, an orange alley shrimp, something like that there. But I'm going to show you how to, how to put it together. The hook in the vase is a Partridge Patriot double and size 10 in black nickel. I'm going to use a uni 3801 white to tie the fly and that's simply because I'm going to colour the head at the top uh, with a glow bright floss number 5. So I'm just going to come in and get the thread started a couple of mil behind the eye of the hook. Just run on a few mil of tan thread and remove your, your waist tag of thread. Now the tag in the rib at the back is going to be a Van Yards French oval gold tinsel. This is size 14. Now, I, I, I think that if you're going to use a uni oval gold, that's equivalent to a small. So we'll just take a length of this off. I'm just going to tie this in uh, underneath the shank of the hook. A couple of turns, then bring it in underneath the shank. Then just work your tying thread just down until you're in line or just slightly past the points of the hooks. Then come round with four turns of the oval gold tinsel. Should be plenty to create your tag. On your last turn, bring it up in between the two hooks. And just keep it in underneath and just work your thread up. Just sort of weigh the length of the body, then just fold it back. And work your thread back down. Now, if you get into the habit of doing this on these type of flies, you can see there where it's folded back on itself. That means the tag it just literally it, the tag will have to bust. Or if you're maybe taking it out of your <coughs> a fish's mouth with your forceps and you ruin the fly yourself. Now the tail on the fly is just some orange, this nice orange bucktail. Now, when I slack bucktail, I just sort of way take what I think I need and then reduce that by half. Just take what you think and then reduce it again by half. Now I'm just going to line this up by hand the best I can. I don't want to stack it because it'll be like a paintbrush. You want to have some sort of taper. In the wee fly. I'm just going to offer this up. But I want this roughly about twice the length of the, the hook over the back. Just come around with a pinch and loop. A couple of tight turns to secure. Just come in, just lift off here all the waist, take it away in a bit of a tapered cut. Right. Do better than that. <coughs> I'm going to add some flash into the tail. And this is just orange micro flash. two strands just offered up into the tail just come around with a pinch and loop another turn to hold fold the waist ends back back up over the top just moisten that and get another fly to that I'm tying these, as, these wee flies in size 10s and 12s then I'm just going to work the thread up just hang in the cut ends of the bucktail now you don't need to be super fussy here the body's going to be dubbed just want to make sure you're creating a nice strong fly by tying the tail in properly then work your thread back down and you get this point just hold the tail down another couple of turns just to make sure your flush onto the back <coughs> excuse me beg your pardon the body is just some copper this is copper light bright so now you don't need to be going nuts with light bright it's dead easy to dub and it's more easier to dub than if you just take it in small pinches and add it rather than adding it in one big lump. Slide that up then we'll just come up with our, our dubbing and you can get it sort of way set onto the hook and then you can tighten if you need to as you go to there. 
come up with a rib, which, which is our oval gold tinsel. And you're looking four turns of the oval gold up the body. Follow this around with your thread. Three turns will hold that, guys. Don't be, don't be going nuts with thread turns either. Three to four turns will hold most materials for you. Then I'm just going to come in with my Velcro, just keeping the thread out of the way. Just bring out some of the some of the light bright into the dressing. Yeah, it's a it's a bright wee number. This is basically all orange. The wing. Just looking some uh, golden pheasant tippet. Dye this one here's dyed a, an orange. Show you, it's the collar there. So, what I do is just take the collar, I pinch it, yeah, just and I take away what I don't need again. Then, what, what I want to use, which is what's left here, just roll it with my finger and thumb. Then, when I offer this up, I want the black tips to be sort of way in line with the bend of the hook at the back then I just pinch this on top come around with a pinching loop now don't worry if this is moved a couple of turns just to secure just make sure everything's centered it's sitting right before you trim it off now before I trim this off I'll come back and hold the wing take another two turns keeping a hold of the wing just come in with my scissors trim away the the way it stands, just come down, tidy it up over the top of those. Nine ten, better holding it sometimes because nine times out of ten, when you trim that, the the tippet, in my experience, um, moves for what it's worth. Now the hackle, you're looking some uh, just a this is just a cheap Indian hand cape, but it's dyed orange. Now you're looking a, a fairly longish uh, hackle. So, basically just what suits the hook. Now I'm just going to offer this up to the, the hook. Then I'm going to come around with one turn to hold. I'm going to fold back the tip. Bring my thread turns back up over the tip and the haggle. Come in, just hold your haggle. Bring your tip out. Bring it away. Then we're just going to come around. Just fold these back. And with the hand haggle, you're probably looking roughly turn and a half to, to two turns. Um, just sort of way depends on the feather that you're that you're going to use. Uh, that's going to be plenty for me there. So I'm just going to follow this around with my thread. Just hold the the haggle. Same again, two three turns. We'll hold that. Just come in, throw away the the waist of the the feather. Then I'm just going to come in, just hold back anything that might want to go forward. And all I'm doing is just putting a bit of thread down here. Sort of way to finish off the head. But before we do that, I'm going to add in. Uh, two wee jungle cock eyes. Now jungle cock's always optional on any salmon pattern. Some people love it, like myself. Some people don't. Some people just don't need it. So that's the two wee eyes there. So all I do is just hold the eyes. Just come in then and just clear space. Half of them up to the hook. Use the, the eye of the hook as a bit of a divider for yourself. Get the length that you want. Then just come in and hold them. Just come around. A couple of loose turns. They're not tight turns, they're just loose. Then just come in and check the length. Just want to come back. Just not happy with the one on your side. And come back in. Same again, just check again. Now, I'm happy with this. Happy with it this time. Just the more we double check. There's nothing worse than having jungle cock that 
it's not level. Then just take your thread, turns down to the eye. Now keeping your thread tight, just come straight in, sweep everything back, then from the front, just up over the top of the stems. Now still keeping your thread tight, don't let it go. Just break these away. Come straight in with your whip finishing tool. Shaping the head here a wee bit with the whip finish. Pull the thread nice and tight. Come in, trim away your tang thread. Now what we're going to do is just to finish the head off, we're going to come in and just brighten it up a wee bit with some glow bright floss. Number four. Now you can use whatever glow bright floss you have. But I'm sort of just going by the, the photograph. end. Just hold everything back. Another couple of turns keeping the glow bright floss tight. Straight in with the whip finisher and tool and put on the whip finish. So shape in the head the best you can. So all you can do put the glow bright floss tight. Come in and trim away the glow bright floss. First coat on the head. Loctite super glue just under the head. Now you don't want this running into your your hand haggle. Just right the whole way right round. Just take your time. And once that dries, guys, I'll come in and hit that with a couple of coats of varnish because if you don't, if it's a new pad of super glue, the moisture won't have sat in. But once you start facing it and you don't varnish, in my experience, you'll get the it'll go white, the head will go white with the moisture bloom. So look, there you go, enough of me rambling on. Bright wee pattern. Looks the business. Um hopefully it does the boy of business when he faces the river teeth. So tie a few of those up for the grills coming here. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And Hopefully then catch you a few fish. As always, many thanks for taking the time to view the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for everybody who subscribed as well. Um, if you're watching the video and you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. It just helps the wee channel grow for me and I do like doing this. And until next time folks, please be good. And if you can't be good, be careful.